people and welcome back to another PS3 video. I always go to say Skate 3 or GTA 5, but anyway, this is going to be a short tutorial on how to get games working on Multiman without having a working disk drive or any disk at all in the drive and also running from an external hard drive. So I recommend your hard drive is over 5000 RPM. Mine is about 5400, I can't remember the exact figure. So that way it is much faster uploading and it's much more stable. But of course, depending on what you own and stuff will depend on what you use. So you want to go onto the link in the description. You want to click on the image and then download this tool. So this tool, what it allows you to do is make your external hard drive FAT32. So you cannot do this normally. So you want to, I'll show you for proof. So right click format. As you can see, you cannot change it to anything other than XFAT and NTFS, which those two aren't good for when it comes to using Multiman. So you want to open the tool. So as you can see, here it is. Just click yes. And here it is. So make sure that the drive is the correct one. You don't want to accidentally overwrite any data you have on your Windows copy or Mac, whatever it is. And then don't change the allocation unit size. For some reason, it still allocates the full amount. But if it doesn't for some reason, then just feel free to change the number to what you want. You can change the uh, name of your drive. So as you can see, I've just kept mine to what it used to be. Tick quick formats if it isn't already, and then click start. So before you do that though, um, I forgot to say that the formatting will remove any data on the drive. So before you actually start it, just select all of your files on there, right click, cut, and then paste it to your desktop or something temporarily. Then you can put it back when you need to. So once that is done though, you will notice that your drive is now FAT32 and you want to open it. Then this is where you put your games. So you want to right click new folder and then make a folder called games and then all in caps. And then if it doesn't work for whatever reason, when you load a game or try and load a game on Multiman, you may want to change the S to a Z like that. So for me, the S works. So as you can see, I've already got the folder there. Ignore these two folders. Multiman adds those two folders automatically to external hard drives when loading games, but you won't have them as of yet. So you want to open that games folder then put any games you have. So one thing to note, is well I, I don't care where you get your games but make sure that you own the game itself already otherwise well yeah I suppose there's piracy in the first place but um, I can't really help that my disk drive broke so normally I would just back up a game but I can't so you want to download them and then when it comes to using them some games when you download them if I find it as you can see with this Modern Warfare 2. So they'll come with lots of RAR files. So is much more convenient because it is heavily compressed that way. But you want to um, go to the top, click on the first RAR file, go all the way down to the bottom, hold down shift and then click on the last RAR file. Then you want to right click on any of the selected files then click extract here. That will make the folders turn out like this. So as you can see it's ps3 underscore game update and disk. So that way it is usable in Multiman because of course Multiman cannot recognize WinRAR files. So you want to ensure that the update is there as well. On some games such as Black Ops for me it didn't come with it and it doesn't want to boost at all. So, but all of the other games do have it. As you can see, they all do. So, and when it comes to using uh, the games on Multiman itself, make sure that the uh, folder is named the bless code or plus code, whatever it is. So I find that that works for like all of the games that way. 
Some games they just don't show on the list if they're not named correctly, I don't know why. But you want to also ensure that when you open that folder, it has direct access to those three different, uh, well the two different folders and the file. So then you can just click on here, eject external hard drive, then you want to remove it, and then I'll see you on the PS3 where I'll go over the settings in Multiman. Right, so I'm back on the PS3, so the first thing you want to do is make sure that you have Multiman installed. So I have one of the latest versions installed, as you can see there. It's a version 4.70. So once you have plugged in your external hard drive through the USB slot, it doesn't matter which slot you put it into, I put it into the left one, but honestly it doesn't matter. So you then want to open up Multiman, and it may take a while to load. So, but you want to also ensure that your operating system or custom firmware, whatever you want to call it, has um, it's it's like a diskless launcher thing. It's a really weird thing to describe. But so, firstly, the games uh, probably won't show up for you. So you want to click refresh at the top, as you can see it refreshed. And then one thing you'll notice with all of the games, they have USB next to them. That means that it's recognized it's on the external hard drive. So as you can see I have MW2, no, MW3 there, Advanced Warfare, Black Ops, which doesn't seem to work, um, Black Ops 2, GTA 5, and MW2. So say with MW2, you want to press triangle, game settings and then you want to click left on the d-pad and then this will access the little menu at the bottom so you want to click BD mirror make sure that's on and then make sure that external is on that makes um, multi-man able to recognize that you're running the game off of an external hard drive and you don't have a disk in the disk tray so if the game needs to be updated, then just press triangle on it, and then game settings, and then update. So this, well, I'm already on the latest version, but it will then scan through Multiman's database, and then it won't download it from PlayStation Network from what I know. It will download it from Multiman servers, I think. So, But you don't want to launch the game, then update it through PSN, because it does crash it. So if you want to launch the game, so I'm going to launch MW2. So you can either press X or you can press triangle and then load. I'm just going to press X. As you can see, it will say, please wait. For some people, or depending on the game, it may say verifying data. So this means that it's putting some of the data in a separate folder on the external hard drive. And then as you can see, when I scroll up, it's now changed names for that folder to PlayStation 3 and then it acts just like a disk so it works perfectly fine and then what you want to do is load up PSN Ninja PSN patch depending on what sort of stuff you use to make sure that you don't get banned for anything and then once you've done that just launch that and then it's all launched perfectly fine so I shall show you quickly so I launch PSN Ninja first and then I just do a couple of settings, so wipe history, replace, read only, clear web browser, I don't know why I do that, but I just feel like it might help. And then click exit, so it does take a while. And then I, I won't show it in the video, because of course it shows my uh, console ID, but I go on PSN patch, then press triangle, because my PSN, um, or PSN, uh, console ID isn't banned. So, but you might want to spoof yours or do whatever you want. Then you just launch the game and it should work perfectly fine. Then you can sign in, do whatever you want. So I hope this video has been helpful to you. If you have any questions, then just comment them down below and I'll be sure to try and help. And I shall see you in the next one.